Sam Cedar, Emma Vigland on the Majority Report. Joining us now is uh, the host of the WTF pod. That's what yeah. I heard. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, also a <laughs> star now of stage and screen. Uh, yes. And, uh, of course, uh, former uh, co-host of Break Room Live, which I'm sure you yeah. get a lot, uh, Mark Matt. Nice to see you, Sam. Emma, nice to see everybody. Nice to see uh, you. Yeah, I, Sam, it's it's been a long time. I, I don't know where all the time goes. Do you, Sam? Um, it just passes. It just it yeah. just passes. Look at you shaved. You, did you have a beard before? No. A little bit. I had, I had, a, I had a beard for a while, and then I was in uh, Atlanta. And sometimes when I'm, the, I'm on the road, I'll go in for a professional shave. It makes me feel like a different person. Okay. There you go. Congratulations. It's a professional shave, you know, with the hot towels you never know what they're going to do and how how you know in depth it's going to be you know if they're going to smack you around it's it, it's always interesting is with that the an option shape. a little bit i've seen it on instagram there are guys who <laughs> do haircuts and shave people and they're just smacking them around i think that's a little much but part of me sort of like maybe that's the way it's supposed to be done i don't know I, it's not hard for me to imagine actually that uh, that might be something <laughs> that, that uh, you yeah. would request oh, if you saw oh, it on the oh. board uh, or, or that you, I, I thought you were going to say that you would like to do occasionally, maybe smack Mark I don't, around. A I don't, bit. I'm not, I'm not good with the a razor or anything to that effect. Yeah. Um, but just smacking. I think you could do that. Mark, do you celebrate the 20th anniversary of Air America? Like, do you like, and now your anniversary is actually April 1st is when your show launched. Uh, yeah. The majority report launched on the 31st. Because I think we started on the 31st with Franken show and yours was right. the morning show. Um, right. Is that something that uh, you, Mark, do you ever uh, like, because you're doing something completely different. No, it's not something I mark and it's not th something that I would know generally, but that, but that's the same with most things. Like, you know, I, I I'm kind of week to week with the life thing. And, and if it's not on my calendar as a, as a uh, legitimate birthday or something, I don't mark it, but yeah, I, but Brendan sent me a picture of the Dunkin' Donuts I used to make my driver stop at every morning at like 3.30 in the morning to get two large black Dunkin' Donuts coffees, and I would get a bag of M&Ms, and I would get on the air, and I would just be lit, just jammed out of my brain. And you're already in waking consciousness because you don't sleep correctly because I was doing like real radio in the morning. And... um and, and like a lot of the, a lot of that time, it's almost like a dream because it actually was because of the time it happened. So I don't have, it's, it's very odd. If I didn't have Brendan in my life, I would remember. You're talking nothing. about Brendan McDonald, who is uh, your producer and partner on WTF. Uh, but he was your producer at, um, at Air America. And uh, yeah, for, he was a, yeah. uh, he was just a baby producer, 24 years old. We've been together for like a hundred years. Well, probably 20. Yeah. 20. I mean, because uh, I was, that's I was, rounding, like, up. Just, I was like, rounding up. You're rounding up. But I mean, that's literally yeah. the anniversary. I mean, so it's right there in front of you. 20, like 20. All right. Is that is that is that the occasion that this is happening? Yeah, that's what's going oh. on right now. Actually, I, th I thought it was uh, a majority report anniversary or something. But it's, well, it's uh, a majority an report anniversary because we're the only show that's continuing from uh, from Air America. Well, that's I guess uh, Randy Rhodes is, but Randy's doing and I, I guess Mike <laughs> Malloy, but they pre-existed. And Hartman, they all yeah, I think so. I think He's so. out there at night somewhere. I think so. Talking the talk. All right. So this is what, what? I want to do. I've sent this okay. to you before. All right. We are we still are we have yeah. this is like. Do you remember when we did the? Um, we did one of these type of shows where we were in two different places before there was Zoom, before there was even like Skype. Somebody had developed this. Uh, a guy who I uh, somehow contacted me from Boston. And we did this show when we were both not on Air America that ultimately became Break Room Live. Do you remember that? I don't know. We Sounds started good. with R.L. Burnside at the beginning. Yes. yes. You'd be in your kitchen. All right. Yes. You don't remember. I remember. All right. I, but I, uh, but I, I, didn't, I didn't come on here to hurt you, Sam. I, you know, I, my father, no, right. I don't, my I don't. father has dementia. I don't know if it's happening to me, but I, I, I do remember. My mom know, has dementia. So we're, it's, we don't know 50, 50 for both of us. Yep. But, um, 
But I do remember the kitchen. Yeah, I do remember it. And I, but I don't remember the guy who did it. And oh, it was no, you didn't know the room. guy. You didn't know the uh, yeah. guy who built the technology. You, you could barely use the technology. What, could you use it? Yeah, right. Well, now that's my question. Who's more technologically capable? It's not he even is. close. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, oh, Mark. Because I... What? No, I know. D tell me about it. If I didn't have Brendan, I would be in a home. See that uh, <laughs> lamp in his back? Oh, you can't see it on the screen. I can see it on your. Yeah. You're in a, that lamp, he wouldn't know how to operate that. He'd have to call Brendan to figure out how to turn that thing. Tell, what about that tiger up there above the bed or that lion? Look at that thing. <laughs> that's, huh? This is a hell of a hotel room in the corner uh, of this. You don't I'm have to DC. pretend that's not your home. All right, I'm uh, in D.C., dude. I'm in D.C. <laughs> oh, whatever. Come on. I got to um, interview Larry David tonight in a oh, live event. Oh my oh, wow. goodness! Um, it's it's driving me crazy. Oh, is that right? You're doing a live uh, WTF? Is that what's going on? No, he's not even letting me record it. That was part of the initial idea, but then he's like, "Oh, is, know, it, is it a book? Is that. it a book thing?" No, it's just me talking to him in front of three thousand people for oh. for no real reason right, for an enter good. for an evening of entertainment. Oh, that's fun. Tell, tell me, tell me about this show that we did. You and I. Yeah, the in the kitchen. I want you, that's where you were going. No, that's where you were. I know. I, uh, just uh, this this technology just reminds me of that. But that's not the point. Yeah, but it was like it was it's like one over the other. I I remember it happening, but I don't. It didn't. We didn't do many of them or anything. No, we. I think we did yeah. like a, eight or ten of those or something. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I wanted to read you this and get your 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 feedback on it. Okay. Um. Uh. This is an email. As you recall, and there's a documentary. Do you remember what the, is it? What is the name of that documentary? It was an HBO left documentary. Left of the dial. Left of the left dial. dial. Left of the dial. And yeah. um, it uh, the the that covers like one like one fifth of like basically the insanity that Air America was. But you could reprise that over and over again. But just at that time, when it when this is dated March twenty seventh. And uh, the the yeah. the network went live on Wednesday. Uh, this is Saturday, uh, Wednesday the the thirty first. Yeah. And this is a, an email from a writer. There was a whole cadre of writers on Air America. A yeah. lot of comedians. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to use his name, but he he handed out this email, and it's on. It's an they're all a a AOL addresses, and it's like I'll print it out. Um, and you remember the guy Evan. Cohen, and we got to yeah, be a yeah, little yeah. bit careful because he's a little litigious. But at one point, I know he was arrested in Guam, and there was yeah. a lot of controversy. And he certainly wasn't paying us. I mean, we, I, I don't know if you had checked the but, but he had a brain tumor. He said he had a brain tumor. <laughs> like whenever you would ask the guy, "Hey, how come the phones aren't working?" He it would take about like sixty seconds before he goes like, you know. Well, I got my brain tumor. Oh, and yeah. and so, but there was also a lot of like the problem with having a con man at the top of a of a of a of a an endeavor is that yeah. everybody who will uh, not challenge that con man gets elevated, and there's yeah. a scramble. And so, this guy is sincere and earnest and thinks that this is an actual operation i want to read some of this and see if this like uh, starts making you feel a little bit jittery is it, is it from evan no no it's to evan okay i'm not going to say who it's from um oh, okay okay oh but it's he was one of the writers and there was a whole cadre of writers very talented uh com yes. comedic writers yes yeah Dear Evan, I wanted to thank you for taking time to talk to me tonight. I decided to go in tomorrow anyway, so I think it sounded like he was about to quit, and lend what I can to the enterprise. Flamethrowing, as you so aptly put it, because this guy came in with some complaints about what was going on, is not really innate to me. On the contrary, by nature, I'm quite loyal. For this reason, I have learned to be very cautious about to whom I give my allegiance. I'm a good soldier when the battle plan makes sense, the overall strategy may be over my rank, but I need to have faith that my generals are smarter than I. Uh, I hate getting marched over a cliff. Two things then. Now, he really liked that metaphor. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it went a little far. <laughs> All right, number one, we have about 450 of these evergreen pieces ready at launch. 30, 60, and 90 seconds long. I'm no CPA, but I don't see how they could have cost you less than $2,000 a minute. They aren't that much better than the stuff we could have written the day of the show for a tenth of that. 
fact, they're not as good since they're not topical. Sure, they're funny, but who cares if it's not relevant? Considering the other problems, I don't think you got your money's worth. Do you remember those? Yeah. I remember like when I got hired, you know what the best thing is, right, before I forget, the one of the greatest Cedar moments and, you know, in terms of comedy, and I never forget it, was that, that big launch party. You remember we had the big yeah, launch party? I was just party. talking about that with Atrios. I invited him there. I was so excited to meet him. Yeah, but the hilarious thing was this was like the idea that you, you had your bow tie on, you were doing some anti-Tucker ironic thing, and... <laughs> And uh, and you got on stage to talk about your show and you pretended to have laryngitis and you were talking about us being the voice of the left. That was genius. <laughs> Don't worry. Tomorrow I should be fine. <laughs> that was the, so I think you were the only funny. person who got it. There was a whole room people. Going, What's going on with this guy? Uh, that was so funny, dude. That was fun. Uh, I just saw a picture of that, actually. Um, yeah. But, uh, all right, so the big thing is the irreducible unit of broadcasting is the show, the network. Imagine if NBC had a production staff and a pool of writers inserting things on the programs. To be frank, it seems insane to me, but I'll just well, say if it way, ever... But you know, you asked me my opinion on that, is that when I was brought in, Liz Winstead had come over from television and hired a staff of writers with this big idea that was really more of a television idea. There was a weird bunch of thinking at the beginning because yeah. nobody really knew how to do radio, right? So the idea was you had these guys, you had a full writer's room of talented guys churning out stuff for months. And ultimately, like even when I started doing Morning Sedition, Jonathan Larson, you know, had this breakdown uh, for the shows and it was minute to minute. It was like minute one, minute two. And I'm like, what is going on? And he sat me in a room with Riley and, and tried to see if we had, you know, a chemistry to do this minute to minute. It was nuts. The learning curve was so intense because there was no radio people. None. Well, I mean, there was some talent like, you know, Randy Rhodes had been on the radio and. Uh, yeah, but uh, now I'm talking about in production. Yep. Yeah. It's absolutely the case. In fact, I think uh, the way that we would introduce the majority report, it was college radio meets college radio. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it wasn't until in the morning that we just, you know, we just talked over this production idea that Jonathan had. It became, it was, it was much more daunting than it should have been. And I knew, and everyone knew that there were these hundreds of bits and we're, everybody was sort of like, why? But that was, that was Liz's, you know, th that was the way she, they all structured it in Shelly, but it was not, uh, yeah, so go ahead. What's he saying next? Well, he says, the whole structure is artificially imposed, an innovation in search of a, uh, of a need. Hardly anyone knows where they fit in. You should disband the entire apparatus, let the shows hire the writers they want, and move on with each show running its own creative shop. Besides, everyone's already trying to figure out how to do that informally. Since I'm part of that structure, and so are my friends, the people I uh, admire professionally, they may tack the, take this as an act of disloyalty. I have to disagree. It's just my opinion, and I'm usually wrong. Besides, uh, word is you're one of the guys going into his pocket to pay me. So in my buck, I owe you as much as I do anyone. That's my two cents. I won't bring it up again, except uh, where it affects me personally. I'll be into work for tomorrow from 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. all the rest of the week. So I don't mind working hard as long as I'm working smart too. I mean, the thing was so I know, earnest. I think I know who. I think yeah. I know who wrote that. So it wasn't earnest. Mike. It wasn't. It wasn't Mike Ferrucci. No, it was not. I mean, it was. <laughs> but but the, but it's so earnest, and yes. it's like, uh, and I know so many people like that, and, and they ran into this sort of like meat grinder, of and of 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 corporate. There was both this sort of like corporate overlay to the whole thing, but also just, you know, built on an incredible there, amount of fraud. Was there co corporate overlay? I mean, Evan Cohen was a con man. Yeah. And then he had money. He had money guys above him who were just, you know, liberal philanthropists who thought they were doing the right thing. But I didn't see any corporate overlay to any of it. Well, we the corporate was the structure that that was like imposed. The, there was all these structures that were built because everybody... There were people who were trying to get Dude, like no, their own fiefdom of power. It was very I, funny. That's, that's right. And it was all built on, on Franken's back. And, and the whole thing that nobody talks about is that we colonized an existing black radio station. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nobody 
ever bring, talks about the irony of that. Like, like that was okay. You would go into work and we had put WLIB, we had sidelined a black radio station and it was not comfortable. It was not great. My co-host was a personality on LIB. And after the show, we'd all be like, I guess we're going. And he'd go into the offices at LIB and be like, what's going on, everybody? You know, and, but it was definitely not comfortable. Oh, my God. And uh, the only benefit of doing the morning show was like no one gave a fuck. You know, like all they cared about was Franken and, you know, a couple of other shows. But we were getting there. No one was in the office. We were doing shit on the air that was crazy. And and we by the time we were done at nine and we were all wasted and leaving by 10, then the rest of the world started to happen. Yep. So we were fortunately for creatively. We were kind of like, you know, that's I don't know what's happening in the morning. Great. It was good for us. Yes, until uh, uh, when when Danny Goldberg came in and that fucking monster. That guy, <laughs> like, I will never, <laughs> never forgive that guy. Let me just say that that Danny Goldberg came in as the CEO. Sorry, is this not what you wanted? I, I no, no, this no. Is this is exactly what I wanted. But I, and I'm going to rev you up a little bit more. It was um, the 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 timing of him uh, um, uh, canceling your show and firing you from yeah. the network or attempting to or whatever it was half fire came literally within uh, weeks after uh, Howard Stern had announced that he was no longer going to be on terrestrial radio. And so the, 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 the metaphor I had was like, it's like, imagine you had this sort of small cola company in Brooklyn and they're, they're pumping out cola and they're trying to break through and they can't. And then Coca-Cola and Pepsi say, we are ceasing all cola production. <laughs> yeah. And then this company in Brooklyn goes, in that case, we're going to cease cola production. Yeah. Like, it's like the one chance we had to sort of like, Bust open into the mainstream, it seems to me, uh, when there yeah. was this huge vacuum in morning uh, radio, and the guy says, now's the time to not have our uh, version of a, of a morning zoo show. Well, as it were. Uh, what look, I don't think we, we would have taken like Stern's market, but there, we were a morning show, you know, uh, and and we could have gotten some in New York, you know, oh, yeah, in, no, at least I mean, in look, New York. What percentage of, of Howard Stern's uh, market would would we have needed to have been successful? One yes. <laughs> percent, two percent. Like it would have been. Uh, it was such a such a mistake, and there was so many of these. It really was amazing uh, time, dude. It was crazy. The whole thing was crazy. Like I like I said, because I was like half in a dream state. A lot of it like it, it is lost to me. But I know the thrill of it was that like you know. <laughs> Brendan always talks about like like on the first day of uh, of morning sedition, like Dan Pashman used to do this packet that I think went went throughout the whole day. Everyone yes. got it. Yeah, yeah. It was this huge. It had to be like forty or fifty pages breaking down the news stories of the day. And I remember the first day at work. You know, Dan walked into my office. I was just sitting there by myself trying to get my brain around what I had to do. And he drops that on my desk and he walks out. And Brendan remembers just hearing from the other room me going like, "What the hell is this? What is this? Do I have to remember all of this?" And it was that's how it started. I showed up there with a Democracy for Dummies book, so I would uh, you know be in the loop. But um. But the, but the thing was, is that because the way our show worked in, in, in terms of what you're talking about, we eventually got assigned one or two writers every week. So there would be a guy that would get up and we'd, we'd be writing fairly elaborate sketches and jokes. We would be in the studio doing, you know, radio theater shit. I mean, this was all happening between three and six in the morning. And Brendan has, you know, we have all of that stuff, all the bits. We have them. And it was like great bits elaborate bits really provocative and not unlike you know un no unlike any other morning show that was really happening we really did a we worked hard and it was pretty good it was a uh, and it was also amazing that we could go from never having done radio on uh tuesday to uh on wednesday going in front of radio and being on in like uh the top markets in the country la new york chicago miami dallas yeah yeah on 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 retired oldie stations it wasn't like we were getting prime dial placement i mean you know some markets were better you remember 
you know, there's a lot of people, you know, tuning in for Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs, and they're like, why are they yelling at me? But, uh, but I, I think there was like, you know, there was a couple of stations that were good. KTLK, Madison, Wisconsin. Remember that? What was the name of that station? Oh, that was a good one. Yep. Right? Well, there was we one in Portland, in Portland and uh, Seattle, yeah. uh, KPOJ in Portland. I mean, that was a big, um, at one point, like we were third in market for everything. Music. Yeah. Why not? And then became then there was the, the the problem with Stephanie Miller that I had that eventually after you know I got fired from Air America I went out to L A and, and Brendan and I did an evening show there but you know Stephanie Miller used to go live in L A at in the morning show right uh, but just what was the issue the issue was like they used to we used to go live in New York from three to six, uh, from six to nine. Right. And it would run in L.A., but then they'd run it again for the morning show. Right. In L.A. So I was on in L.A. It meant a lot to me. But then KTLK decided to have Stephanie go live in the morning and knock me out. So at the end of my recording days, at the end of the show in New York, I would always take a shot at Stephanie. Like I would be like, all right, L.A., well, uh, have a good time with Stephanie Miller. You know, like, and that bit me in the ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, uh, I, I had a similar um experience with uh ed schultz who uh people thought was on air america wasn't do you remember you called in that day and um we were going to uh sirius xm and uh tom hartman was going to be on the thing but uh, he had heard that maybe they were going to bounce him on the air america channel for ed schultz who was you know sort of our competition and i said something very innocuous that was like something to the effect of like I'm a fan of Tom Hartman's. If you are, you know, let Sirius XM know that uh, they should put Tom Hartman on there. And uh, he sent me a very, very angry email. Um, and? Yes. And he referred to himself. Um, uh, he referred to himself as Big Ed. And then I wrote back an email pretending that I did <laughs> not believe it was Big Ed. And saying that he was um, a Hannity fan who was just an idiot and this this writer, and that's not the case. Big Ed would know that uh, I wasn't uh, doing anything untoward. And uh, he wrote back, no, this is Big Ed. And I said, <laughs> I said, look at when you sent this email. Big Ed is on the air. Are you telling me that Big Ed would have done this at the break? He would have been that petty? Nice try. Go tell Sean Hannity a uh, hello for me. And then the next day he went on and had a huge on-air rant that I think you can still find. Um, <laughs> Ed and I find, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, shook hands. Big Ed. But that was like eight years Big later. Big Ed. Yeah, I like that. Even when you say idiot, you know, lightly, you still have the inflection that you have when you yell it. Like, me. even when you're like, eh? yeah. Idiot. Yeah. Like, well, it's like, I, I there's a range of like, idiot. Yeah, you did. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's your, your best word. So, Mark, what's next for you? <laughs> hey, I'm just going to freak out for three hours before I talk to an old Jew in front of 3,000 people. Outside of that, um, Look, man, you know, the podcast is still, you know, going strong. I'm on a stand up tour right now. Um, there's, you know, there, there might be some film and television in the future, but I'm, I'm starting to like, I don't know about you, but I'm starting to think in terms of like, when can I stop? Yeah. I've, uh, well, that's, okay. It comes up occasionally. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. But I mean, I think my timeline's probably a little bit longer than yours. Well, why? How well, you? Not that much younger than me. But here's what I'm learning. I'm not that much younger than you. But I'm saying, my, but I've got, I got, I got kids. I got, you, got, a, you know, a, a, yeah, a, yeah. That, well, that's, and, you know, the whole thing. that was, uh, that was your mistake. But I, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a good guy. I'm, a, I have a mental problems. So I wasn't. Uh, I didn't take that as you saying I was not a good guy. <laughs> No, you manned up. You did the thing. You had the kids. You're a good dad. You know, you're, you're struggling. I mean, I wasn't going to bring this up, uh, but somebody has just uh, reminded me, like, um, uh, Paul Giamatti brought me up, and you immediately went into, uh, he's an obnoxious guy. Yeah, did I? Yeah, he said, uh, yeah. He mentioned, what, what, I mean, I thought that was so, a, little bit, wait, a little bit rude. I wasn't going to talk about that, but. But wait, is there an argument there? <laughs> Oh, all right. Touche. 
I don't know that I was saying it in a negative way. I, no, I no, it sounded way. positive. It definitely sounded positive. <laughs> We've had our time, Sam, but I, I think there's a lot of love there, and I always get a big laughs out of you, and I, you know, <laughs> and I, you know, I. Uh, Break Room Live I, I, was ahead of its time. It just also was at a very bad time. 3 p.m., not the best time to watch a there, there half-hour-long live show. I mean... Everything. Everything was, like, it was uh, against us on that. The technology didn't exist. You know, nobody knew what it was. You remember when they were building that website? It was this massive thing. It cost, like, forty or $50,000. Oh, so it, it cost catalog- a lot more than that. <laughs> I remember the guy who was in charge of it, and it, it basically bank- and it ended the company. <laughs> it was such a scam. That last iteration of Air America was literally like a, like a con man. In fact, I wrote a show about that for uh, AMC. Yeah. They no, didn't, I... Uh, didn't go anywhere, but... It didn't? Sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. I, uh, I just remember them, like, you know, when they rehired me, you know, I, my deal was like, you know, I was a mess, you know, and yes. uh, because my wife w- had was divorcing me and I was like just shattered. And uh, the only way I would do the show is that if I could get the same amount of money I got when I used to be on Air America and they could give me, you know, 60K up front to stop the divorce. That was the only condition I would do it. I need cash now to stop this. So they agreed to that. And then I'm sitting there and, and we're like, we got to get Sam in here because I, I, I'm not capable of doing anything. And then yeah, you came in and then the, the fireworks started. It was, yep. it was classic. It was historic pre-streaming streaming. It, it certainly was. And it, I should just also note that the, probably the first streaming show ever was one that you did in like 98. The, oh, the, MSNBC, uh, the, Broadway, the MS the Broadway video thing. Yeah. The MS what was thing it called? This is, was it This Is Not a Test? Yes. I think that's what yes. it was. And uh, Biederman you know, was, was funny. the executive yeah. producer of that. How's that guy doing? He's doing great. Yeah, we did that thing, and it was like, you know, it had animation, it had Nick McKenney, it had a writer crew, and it was like a live streaming thing, but it was still audio. They could only, they didn't do video. They had animation, I believe. Oh, I think that's right. And, and I, and, I, did, and, I was a and, stringer for that. Do you remember I did a couple of bits where I was supposedly reporting uh, from some? Yeah, 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 actually- of course. Right. And I would interview celebrities and it was, you know, Broadway videos behind it. But like, as it turns out, you know, we're doing this and we're putting our whole life into it. And I think the only people that could hear it were people on the Microsoft campus. Like, right. I don't think it was. I don't think it was going It was all out. dial up. It was dial up. I mean, it literally was like a, a job to like- just figure out how you could listen to it. Just it, it, like it just didn't like, and we were working so hard. I, mean, I interviewed Phil Hartman, or uh, yeah, right? Is that who I'm thinking of? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, from SNL, right? Phil Hartman. Right? I mean, Phil Hartman, yeah, a guy. I mean, yeah, yeah, and Conan, and uh, like you know, there was a whole bunch of legit celebrities, and they were doing these animated bits and interactive bits. But I think it took weeks for us to realize, or for me to realize, anyways, that literally no one could could listen to it. Yeah, like that no was one. my experience uh, when we did our show on Peacock, actually. Uh, <laughs> but that's a different story. <laughs> but Break Room, I mean, even that, like, I, Brendan and I, like, I remember when we were getting new technology because I did that deal with The Guardian to go on the road to follow McCain, you know, and and uh, and we were doing things from the road and we had some sort of camera that, you know, we could do live that didn't work. I mean, it was exhausting. Yeah. Crazy. But we did some funny shit on break room. I know it. Uh, they they could have done that. Um, uh, we could have done that. That could have been much more do successful. You, but do you talk to Carl Ginsburg? I haven't talked to Carl in a while, actually. I don't think he'll ever talk to me again. I'm not even sure why. Well, I mean, I can come up with a lot of reasons. What? Why me? Why not you? What you? Well, why I'm, would uh, it? you know, you know, it's it's uh, it's an open question. Why? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Man, you were funny, boy. During break room, like you were so funny. Are you still funny sometimes? Mm, not, not, not that often. No, I this mean, is I the try great loss. It, yeah, the great yeah. loss to comedy. And and I've talked to you about it before. <laughs> that man, I, there's Sam, still time. There's still time. There's still time. For me. 
there's still time. You're true. It's just so great. It's so amazing, though. You're truly one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. And it's so oh. serious, Sammy. You're so serious. Well, I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. I... <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, I... buddy. You, you, you did an episode with Mike Berbigula, didn't you? And uh, you must yeah. have done a WTF, right? A couple. I, I've done a few. I, I, in my attempts to, to like that guy, I have had him on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I ran into him recently, and I, the only thing I can think about when I see him is how angry you were that he existed. Uh, and I don't even think you knew him. You just were upset about his uh, successful one-man show. Back well, yeah, day. I think I'm sure that was it. But but they're like it's layered and it's all me. And to be honest with you, you know he's a he's a great comic. He does great stuff. And but I you know I've always had this thing that, and I tried to you know resolve these things within me. But he's been on the show several times, and he actually hosted an anniversary show where he interviewed me. And I think I play up this 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 like this resentment. It's not it does it's not really as as real as it used to be and i feel kind of bad about it but it's become a thing and yeah. now, now i think to the point where he's like you know like you know i don't even want to bother with mark right. anymore. i've had but enough not, of that why would i deal with that anymore sure that, and that's something that a lot of people feel yeah so he's been on multiple times and and the very funny sam cedar's been on how many times well i've been on WTF? i've been on a couple of times you've, uh, yeah, you've a few been times. on WTF? yeah yeah, oh, yeah. I'm back, yeah. oh yeah oh yeah yeah uh, yeah anytime he's in la we find room for sam yeah, it's been a while. I'll be out there. Uh, uh, you, you get a new one. I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> and, and Matthew yeah. Film Guy's been v on Visit Fisher. WTF, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Matthew, yeah. Matthew oh. Film Guy was on uh, many, many times. Uh, He's, he had his break with us, I think, on Break Room Live, where he was actually making films. And then... Then I used him on the early WTFs, uh, uh, a well, few minutes Ma with Matthew. Matthew Film Guy was uh, first uh, in uh, Bad Situationist. Yeah, he's your buddy. He can, uh, I, I hear from him occasionally. Yeah, well, I see right. he, he comes on uh, once a month. Gives us uh, yeah. a regular. Who else you see? Who else I see? Oh, uh, we just yeah. interviewed uh, Janine. Um, How's she see... doing? I haven't talked to her in a long time. I don't even know if I have her number anymore. I, she's, is she all right? She's, yeah, she's doing great. All right, but maybe Good. maybe we should have this conversation off air. Like we'll through, <laughs> no, this uh, is the, this is what people want. This is the the intimacy. This is the candid stuff. You know what I mean? Don't be afraid of it. Can I tell the? Uh, let me tell one more story about the uh, in break room live. And I know I've told this story on WTF, but the uh, the patent one. Oh, I tell me tell me so, again. Like Mark and I, there was friction on uh, break room live because <laughs> you were in a bad way and uh, you uh, you know you didn't like the fact that I was talking about politics, even though that's what my job was there. And, yeah. uh, and people can go back and watch those and, and hear you go like, like I'm talking about politics and we're sitting right next to each other and you're going. <laughs> 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 and, <laughs> and I would just hear, and I, like, it was so pronounced the <laughs> <laughs> that like, as soon as I would hear that because of my problems, I would immediately go like, oh, I'm taking that as I need to speak a little bit longer about this right. and, and get more weedy. And so that was like that. Was, people could see the tension there. Yeah, and, yeah but yeah, but to, what just upset me. See, the thing was, is I don't think it was so much about the politics. It was just a competitive thing where it's sort of like, how long is he going to go on for? I want to talk. I want to do some stuff. I know. I, mean, I we, knew it was a competitive thing. But the point is that, like, you started that within the first 15 seconds of me talking. <laughs> Dude, do you know how long it takes you to make a point sometimes? <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> leaving that aside. Okay. So we're sitting in the office, and I know how to push your buttons because your buttons are huge. Like, if you, yeah. like, your buttons are like yeah. chest size. And yeah, it's like on a on a like on a clown costume. Yeah, but, but big, like, probably like bigger. I mean, it's really more yeah. like a. It's almost know, like you're an appendage to your buttons, yes. and so you and I would sit right across from each other in one of those sort of like desks where they're jammed up against each other. So <laughs> when I'm sitting at my desk, I'm looking right at you, and you're me, and Brendan is sitting over to the right of us. Almost yeah. like making a, an isosceles triangle, if you will. Yes, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, you're sitting there, and I come in, and I'm determined. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignite Matt. 
And so I come in, I sit down. <laughs> Why and would I'm I have like, a problem with this guy? Why you know, would I have a problem with you? Yeah, go ahead. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, did you guys see this new uh, movie for that Patton's starring in? The fan? This is going to be huge. <laughs> I mean, he 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 can win an oscar i mean this is it's it's unbelievable like no, i've seen the ads like i can't even watch tv anymore without seeing these ads keep coming up and it looks like he's doing a really good job in it and that's all i said and brendan's looking at me and one minute two minutes three minutes go by four minutes go by five minutes we're in complete silence and then you slam your laptop on the ground and go, where the fuck is all the promotion for this show? I can't fucking handle this. And you got up and stormed out of the room and Brendan just looks at me and goes, great, thanks. <laughs> Good job. Good thanks, job. Uh, I felt bad about that, but it was overwhelmed by how fun it was for me. And so... <laughs> Then I felt good. Oh, uh, it's okay. It was fun. It was funny. Man, you doing that thing with about uh, remember Charlie? What was it? Charlie Kirker? Kirker? Yeah. Charlie. He was the last you know, owner of Air America, I think. Yeah. When you were doing that, like <laughs> you remember the, that? <laughs> yeah, there was a sense at that that part of the regime was just like everybody yeah. there was just basically like <laughs> Yeah, like we had one executive who would see me who was like this sort of, he was sort of like a right winger and he would just came in from radio and we walk me down and he'd just go like this. And I'm like, that's from the sting. That just means like there's a mark here. Like it's, <laughs> it's like, we're, like they were all just taking money from this guy and, uh, and it was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, you, did, you did the milking thing. Yeah. It was funny. Well, that, where that ended up is like, because when I took that job there, they'd give me some money to relocate, but I wasn't, you know, I knew that it was going to be, we're going to be shit canned inside a year. So I'm not going to, I had the apartment there already. I wasn't just going to move, you know, out of LA. So I took the money and I, you know, instead of move shit in, I just like, I bought a guitar amp. I bought a TV. I got shit for the apartment, which was empty, which was moving. That was moving. Of course. And at the end of, and when we get fired though, you know, the CFO has me in and he's got papers. He's like, so what is this, you know, uh, $400 for a guitar amp? I'm like, are you fucking serious? Is this the, this is what you're doing now? That's where that ended. Yep. That was it. Can impressive. we get that money back? Did you send it back to him? I don't think so. I saw Doug Krieger two weeks ago. Oh, wow. He came to a show when I did Terrytown. Oh, that's fine. He's all right. He's always a nice guy. Mark Marin, this has been a yeah. pleasure. Uh, thanks been. so much for coming on and uh, have fun tonight if you're in the DC area I'm sure this it's sold out by now though right I think so you know I never know but yeah it's at the uh, Anthem Theater and I'll be touring all across the country wtfpod.com slash tour alright uh, thanks Mark I love good you buddy you. I love good you to too. see you bye bye, -bye.